There's nothing quite like the thrill of the hunt, folks. But I'm not too sure people actually realize just how great it could be. Hunting in Don't Starve comes with so many benefits that it would be a shame for us not to cover it in full. So we are gonna do just that. I'll show you just what you'll find, how to go about finding it, and what you can do following the completed hunt. But first, we actually need to go find some dirt. Suspicious dirt piles are actually naturally spawning formations that allow us to track animals in our worlds. There can be 6 to 12 tracks per hunt, and your character will say when you are getting close to the end. And we know which way to continue the hunt via the direction the tracks point, so keep on following them. But really try not to take too long. The tracks will fade away if ignored or lost for too long, which is the exact opposite of what we want to happen. But reach the end of a hunt and you may discover one of these creatures, a koalaphant. At a thousand health, a koalaphant is very similar to a beefalo. However, this beast packs a much bigger punch. Koalaphants also try to avoid the player by all means, so you will have to chase the sucker down during the hunt. But running one into the edges of the map is effective, and once you do smack it in the face, the murder juices start flowing. And to kite a koala is very simple. Just bait out its attack, get 5-6 to six hits yourself, avoid the attack again, and then repeat until the beast is slain. But, before we talk the looted drops, let's actually discuss other ways to use creation to our advantage. Because since koalas hate us, we can actually use their skittishness to run them into penned off areas where they will be imprisoned for eternity. But why would we do this and what real purpose are these guys going to even serve? Well, koalaphants occasionally poop. And I mean, who doesn't? But that means you can keep them around and visit them from time to time to gather some of that poop for whatever purpose you please. That, or maybe you just want to create a petting zoo of sorts. But Beard, why is one of yours blue? Well, we'll get to that soon. For now, let's return to that loot. When a koalaphant dies, it will drop a lovely pile of 8 meat that can go a long way for such a simple task. But we are after something else entirely. Koalas drop their tusk as well, and that's our prize. Although it is a meat item, the trunk cannot be hung from a drying rack. Instead, it's a meat item that can be eaten raw with no negative effects. When raw, it provides 37.5 hunger and 30 health. But cook it to not only turn it into a lovely steak dinner, but it will also double the positive effect of that hunger while increasing the health value as well. It's honestly one of the better food and health items that is easily accessible around. But that's not all. Combine the trunk with 8 spider silk to create what is known as a breezy vest. But as the description says, it is warm, just not that warm. The breezy vest is a clothing item that comes with an insulation factor of 60, meaning it will help you keep a warm a little longer. The vest also has a passive sanity boost of plus 2 per minute, and can still provide wetness resistance. This is all cool and all, but we can do better. Much better. Make your way through a hunt during winter, and you may stumble upon our blue friend from earlier. This is a winter koalaphant, and on paper, it is the exact same as a normal one. But the snout on this guy is far more valuable. So get his attention through any means and murder it dead so using the same tactics as before as we need to obtain one of these puppies, a winter koalaphant trunk. But just make sure none of the locals are around to come and eat your stuff because we, uh, we kind of need it for this next bit. Using the same recipe as before, but with two beefalo wool this time, we can make what is known as a puffy 
vest. At a whopping 240 insulation and the same sanity regen as the breezy vest, the puffy vest is one of the best items for winter in the entirety of Don't Starve. So get you one. And if you do get one, just combining it with a thermal is enough to make winter a cinch. But combine it with a beefalo hat and a thermal, and you are going to have to be the worst player ever to freeze in winter. But it ain't all sunshine and rainbows, folks. You see that monstrosity over yonder? That is what is known as a varg, an aggressive beast that you can find while on the hunt. Now, there's but a chance for you to find it, and it begins at 2.5% on day one, but it does climb to a 16.5% chance come day 100. But in other words, just the longer you survive, the higher chance for you not to survive longer. But Clay did actually tweak things to increase the overall chance of not finding a koalafin in general, so be careful. But we'll get to that later. Now, there's no need to go chasing these furballs around, as they won't back down from a fight. And at 1800 health, they aren't flimsy. But it really isn't the Varg itself that's the issue, it's the hounds that come to its aid. At times, a Varg will howl, and it will actually spawn two hounds that will arrive to its side. So, fighting one of these things should see you taking precautions beforehand, and not just running in there to smack it dead. For a Varg and its hound companions can easily overwhelm you if tackling it solo. And then, you'll have yourself a bad news beard situation on your hands. So fight it with other players, maybe even get some pigs on your side, or just have a good number of armors and some good healing items with you. However, Vargs can be mighty darn useful if left alive too. If you can manage to get one caged up by either risking your behind, putting it to sleep, or using a telelocator staff like we did in the Winona farming video, you will have yourself a hound spawner. And as long as the Varg remains alive, he will constantly spawn in hounds two at a time, meaning constant hound loot for you. Just be mindful of the fact that a Varg can spawn ice and fire hounds too. Of course, it depends on the season. Oh, and by the by, it only takes one sleep dart to put the beast to sleep. So, keep that in mind. My goodness, it's a Yukis. Yet another hostile creature you may find. The Yukis is just a beautiful animal, don't you think? It shares a similar chance to spawn, like the Varg, at 5% on day one to a 33% chance by day 100. But even though his lower health may deceive you, a Yukis is one of the most annoying mobs in the entire game. For you see, Yukises are smarter than they look. They have a mucus attack that renders the player immobile as they kick you in the face repeatedly. You will eventually break free, and then you'll be able to deal damage yourself. But it isn't always going to let you get a good number of hits in. So the Yukis will follow the same pattern of projectile snot, kicky kicky in your face, and so on. It may be easy for a character like Wigfred to tank this whole thing, but others may and will have more difficult time with it all. But there is a cheeky little strategy that I implore you solar players to use. And that's enlisting our porky companions. Befriended pigs will actually free the player from the Eucus' phlegm far, far faster than you'd normally be able to do. So, you would be able to get back in the fight without taking too many kicks to the face, if any at all. Also, the pigs will help dwindle down its health for a far simpler, quicker, and cleaner kill. So there's no reason to hunt alone, form a hunting party instead. But, speaking of phlegm, phlegm is completely and utterly useless. Sure, it's edible, but at only 12.5 hunger at the cost of 15 sanity, who in the world would actually seek this out to eat it? It's not used in any crafting recipe, it cannot be used as fuel, nor 
can it be used as fertilizer for plants, nor can it be used to befriend any other mob. So, why the heck is this even in the game? Steel wool, on the other hand, does have a use. Like how it can be turned into a saddle for beeflo. The war saddle, to be exact. This particular saddle adds 16 additional damage to your beeflo friends, and it bloody looks good in the process. It is also used in the brush recipe, and the brush can be used to add to the taming level of a beeflo while also netting you a beefalo fur once per day. Using the brush is the equivalent of stuffing the beef's face with food four times over. So, it's mighty useful. And finally, steel wool is needed to spawn in one of the many pets and critters in-game, Eulets. Head to the rock den, but if you don't know or recall how to go about getting there, or getting some of the other ingredients needed, go watch our video on all the critters and don't starve together. But there you have it everyone, an extended and extensive look at hunting in Don't Starve and how we can use some of the game's elusive creatures to our advantage. It's a big and effective part of survival for this game, so I do hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching, best of luck out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!